Let me ask you a few questions that may seem unrelated. Number one, how long have you had your current phone number? Number two, do you get a lot of robo or spam calls? Number three, do you wish your boss wouldn't call you or text you after work? And number four, are you using any websites that only offer SMS two-factor? For the record, please don't actually leave any answers in the comments. This is a thought experiment. Depending on your answers, this video might be for you because in this video, I'm gonna talk all about voice over IP and why you should include it in your privacy toolbox if you are able. For this video's promo segment, I wanna let you guys know some exciting news. We have a merch store. That's right. You can now go buy physical merchandise and we ship anywhere in the world. There is a whole blog post about it if you wanna know how it works on the back end and all the gritty details. Right now, we only have five items as a test run. I have a t-shirt, I have a hoodie, I have a water bottle, a coffee mug, and an iPhone case. And I will be contacting them to say, please make pixel cases for those of you who use custom ROMs. If you wanna help support the new oil and get a little bit of something in return, please definitely check that out. Thank you guys so much for your ongoing support. So as always, let's start off with a definition. What is voice over IP? Voice over IP, often called VoIP, is simply phone calls over the internet. For you as the end user, it functions almost exactly the same. All of the apps I'm gonna talk about later in this video allow you to make calls. Some of them even allow video calls. So it's basically just a phone number that is not tied to your SIM card, but rather functions over the internet. And because nowadays the internet is accessible via cell data, that means it's also accessible over cell networks. And like I said, for all intents and purposes, it's basically a phone number. Voice over IP has actually been around for a long time. If you've ever worked an office job, you've probably used it. Most companies don't actually have hundreds of phone numbers. They have voice over IP numbers that they assign to different desks and stations. For our purposes, what this means is that you can have multiple phone numbers. And we're gonna talk in a minute about why that is valuable. Now, one quick drawback that is worth noting, the quality and reliability of your calls depends heavily on your internet connection because again, this is voice over internet. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you may not be able to connect at all. Or if you do, it may be nearly unintelligible. Whereas if you switch over to your regular SIM number, it'll probably be significantly better. For most of us who live in a highly developed area where internet is readily available at most, if not all times, this is really not a big deal. I do wanna add a quick caveat. A lot of people trash the idea of voice over IP because it's not end-to-end -end encrypted. That's okay. Different tools for different jobs. Voice over IP in this context is not designed to be a secure method of communication. It is designed to reduce tracking and protect you. For example, using a voice over IP number for two-factor, if it's a website that doesn't accept any other form of two-factor, that reduces the odds of a SIM swapping attack if that website suffers a data breach. It is significantly harder to SIM swap a voice over IP number than a regular SIM card phone number. So keep that in mind when we talk about this stuff later. None of these options really offer any meaningful end-to-end -end encryption or zero knowledge storage, but that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be used. It's about knowing where the tool is supposed to be used. I wouldn't use a screwdriver to try and drill a hole through a wall. That doesn't mean a screwdriver sucks. It means it's not the right tool for the job. So why do I recommend voice over IP? The biggest reason is because these days, phone numbers are basically trackers. One of the questions I asked at the beginning was how long have you had your phone number? Personally, I've had my SIM card number for 13 years, if I did my math right. And if you're not a privacy focused person, that number usually gets handed out like candy. People use the same number for hunting for jobs. They use it for ordering things online. They use it for making friends. They use it for signing up for different services. A lot of restaurants you go to nowadays, if there's a wait, they'll ask for your phone number so they can text you when the table's ready. This ubiquity has made phone numbers very good trackers. They've become heavily tied with our lives. And if you think they're not good trackers, consider the story of Twitter who was asking people for their phone numbers under the pretext of using it for two-factor authentication, but in reality, they were using it for marketing purposes. Phone numbers are a very valuable part of your profile. They're basically social security numbers these days. This is especially true in countries where people are required to present an ID to buy a SIM card number. So it becomes impossible to get a cell phone without directly legally tying your ID to it. 
In countries where that's not a requirement, it's still very common for people to buy a phone on credit, which requires them to pull a credit check and now your ID is tied to that phone and that number. There are a ton of resources out there for looking up phone numbers. This isn't limited purely to Twitter and their ad partners. Your boss can take the phone number that you put on a resume or application and use that to look you up. The date that you met online and are meeting for the first time could do the exact same thing. Phone numbers are extremely powerful and effective trackers. That's the biggest reason I recommend voice over IP, but there are other reasons that are tangentially related to that. For example, I mentioned people can look you up. This is a great way to separate your work and your personal life. If you use one phone number for personal stuff and one phone number for work stuff, if your boss tries to look up that phone number, they won't find you, or at very least, they'll only find work-related professional stuff, which is a great plus. You can also use this to set healthy work-life boundaries. You can shut off that voice over IP number at the end of the day because you only use it for work. Now, obviously I don't recommend doing this if you work a job where you're on call, but if you work a job where you clock in, clock out and go home, shut off that number, reclaim your personal life. Another advantage is that it does reduce spam and robocalls. Because you're not using the same number everywhere and you're prioritizing them, which I will talk about shortly, that means that the numbers that are actually important to you, like your friends, your family, your work numbers, those are less likely to get caught up in data breaches or sold around by scummy data sellers and therefore are less likely to end up in a robocall database. It really cuts down on the amount of spam. Compared to the people around me, I get basically no robocalls or spam calls. I get a couple a month and they're incredibly rare. Finally, there is the possibility you might be able to save some money. Depending on the kind of phone plan you have, you might have to pay for minutes. At least in my part of the world, that's not super common anymore, but I know in other parts of the world, they still do things like pay by the text message, for example, which is why things like WhatsApp are so popular in other parts of the world. Well, this could be a good way around that possibly. Okay, so real quick before I jump into my recommendations, I want to give you some advice on how to use voice over IP numbers, or at least how I use them. Some of the options that I'm gonna present here allow you to have multiple numbers, which really opens up a lot of possibilities. If you only have access to one voice over IP number as a secondary, then this might limit you and you might have to do some prioritizing. Maybe it's more important to you to have a personal number and a work number, or maybe it's important to you to have like a junk number and a real number. If you do have the option to have multiple phone numbers, here's what I do. I have one that's used for personal stuff. I have one that's used exclusively for signal. That might be a little overkill for some people, but it works out well for me. I have one that I use for work. I have one that I use for important stuff like medical, housing, etc. And I have a burner phone number that I cycle out about once a month. And that's the one I use for like ordering pizza if they need to call me and find my home or if I'm dropping off my car at the mechanic and I need to give them a number where they can call me and reach me. Really, at the end of the day, this is totally personal preference. I'm not gonna tell you there's a right way or you have to do this. I'm just throwing out some ideas on how I use it. So you guys might have different needs and different threat models. That's totally okay. Last but not least, let's talk about some of the different voice over IP options that I recommend on the website and some of the features they have to offer. We're gonna start off with my personal favorite, MySudo. MySudo is really popular in the privacy community because they give you up to nine phone numbers. In fact, they're not just phone numbers, they're full on identities. Each identity is its own little container that comes with a web browser that blocks trackers, email, masked credit cards, and phone call and SMS. If you're contacting another MySudo number, then your phone calls are actually end-to-end -end encrypted. And you can also do video calls and group chats at that point. They claim that their service is zero knowledge encrypted at rest. So once the data is in your inbox, for example, it is supposed to be zero knowledge. Unfortunately, it is US, UK, and Canada only when it comes to phone numbers. There's also not really a free tier. I mean, there is a free tier, but you can only talk to other MySudo users, so it's not really functional for the purposes of this video. Our next recommendation is called Hushed, and fans of TechLore may be familiar with this one because this is the one that Henry used while he was on Calyx OS. On the plus side, Hushed offers you an unlimited number of phone numbers, as many as you are willing to pay for. Unfortunately, they only offer US and Canadian phone numbers. Other than that, they're pretty straightforward. They offer SMS, they offer phone call, they don't offer any group calls or video calls or anything like that. It's a very bare bones, straightforward service. Now this next entry might surprise you and that's Google Voice. I wanna remind you what I said earlier about how these are not to be used for privacy from the company. These are used to defend against stalkers, doxers, and data breaches. So yes, in this scenario, Google Voice would have access to all of your correspondence, but remember that when it comes to sensitive communications, you should be using an encrypted messenger for those kinds of things. 
Voice over IP is not for sensitive communication. It is for the day-to-day -day trivial stuff where you can't get somebody to use something like Signal instead. It would be really nice if my boss used Signal, but I don't have the ability to force him to do that. Same thing with my bank, same thing with the mechanic when they're calling to tell me that my car is ready for pickup. Getting back on topic, Google Voice is free, which is probably their biggest draw. They also offer an unlimited number of phone numbers. You can have as many as you want. They will forward the service to your regular phone number so you don't have to download an app if you don't want to. It works with phone calls and SMS messaging, but unfortunately only offers US and Canadian numbers. Our next service is a recent addition, so I'm not gonna lie, I'm not super familiar with them. I haven't had a chance to test them out myself, but as with all of the services on the website, I did do my research when they were suggested to us. This is a service called Tossable Digits. Tossable Digits offers an unlimited number of phone numbers in a whopping 70 countries. So if I understood their website right, that means there are 70 different countries where you can get a phone number with this service. Unfortunately, SMS only works in US and Canada, but phone numbers should work in the other 68 countries, which is a huge win if you live outside the US. Next up is Skype. I know that's also kind of a weird addition to have on this list, but Skype does actually allow you to get a phone number where you can call other people and have them call you. Skype only gives you 10 phone numbers, but they are available in over 25 countries. As a really cool bonus, they have a desktop app, so you don't necessarily have to have a phone on or with you or at all. Unfortunately, it does require a Microsoft account. So there's a lot of pros to Skype, but there's also a lot of cons as well. Also, Skype does have an option for end-to-end -end chats. You have to opt into this, but it is a feature with other Skype users. So if you know other Skype users, you guys can have an encrypted chat using the Signal protocol. However, they probably don't do anything to resist metadata. So beware of that when you're having that chat. There is some data that gets exposed there. Last but not least, there's a service called Viber. Viber claims that they have zero knowledge storage. They claim that they are end-to-end -end encrypted to other Viber users, and they claim to offer worldwide phone numbers. Unfortunately, they only offer one phone number. So this would be a situation where if you have that one phone number, you kind of have to pick what's important to you. Do you want to use it for trash? Do you want to use it for work? Do you want to use it for signal? It's entirely up to you, but that is an option out there. And again, they offer phone numbers from a large number of countries, which is why they're on this list to give people who are outside the US and Canada a few more options. Before I go, I wanna remind you guys, we now have a merch store. So please, if you wanna help support the new oil, we are more than happy to give a little bit back to you in the form of some merchandise. Let us know what you think. Let us know if there's any uh, particular designs or products you wanna see. Check out the blog post if you have any questions about how the merch store works. And thank you guys so much for supporting the new oil. I hope that this video has been helpful in helping you guys realize the need for voice over IP and giving you some options. I know options are not great, especially for people in other parts of the country. So please, if I have overlooked any apps that you're aware of, don't be afraid to mention them in the comments. Don't be afraid to open a GitLab issue and suggest them if you wanna do that. We are definitely in the market for more privacy respecting options and options that work for people in other countries. This is a very Western centric service. And personally, I don't think that should be the case. I think everybody is entitled to privacy. So if you know some that work in other countries, by all means, let us know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you wanna learn more about voice over IP, we have a whole page on it over at thenewoil.org.